Hello, 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 everybody. Come on in today. I am going to be talking about how to clean house. It is time for us to get all of the open doors to the devil out of our house. So I'm going to talk about Harry Potter books. I'm going to talk about tarot cards and Ouija boards and sage. And I'm going to talk about essential oils and all the questions that I get all the time. We're going to cover. I have such a long list. And we're going to cover everything that is on my list and then some. I'm also going to uh, show you how to anoint your house with oil. If you have oil in your house, olive oil, then it'll be very easy for you to actually anoint some oil and consecrate it. So that's what we're going to be doing on this live. I believe that every demon in hell is going to tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. And as we go into this new year, I believe it's time to get our house in order. If you believe that, I want you to type in the comments, just type in a little fire emoji or put your hand up or say amen in the comments. Come on, somebody. So tonight is the night. I started a little early just because I felt like I needed to go forth right then and there. So I know I'm supposed to technically start in two minutes, but it'll give everybody time to uh, get in this room and share the video. Guys. I've received so many testimonies. I've shared a few of the testimonies, but so many are coming in. I can't even keep up with how many testimonies are coming in for people being set free, healed, and delivered. I'm talking about children even. So it has been just an incredible time in the Lord during these Friday night broadcasts, these deliverance broadcasts. You guys begin to share. We're gonna go through the house. We're gonna go through so many things. You may actually have an attack that you're going through or a struggle and you're like, I'm submitted to God. I'm praying like what is going on? Why can't this thing break? You might just have an open door in your house to the devil. So he's looking at what you have in your home. And he's like, that's mine. I've got a contract with this thing right here. You have given me right to be here. Believe it or not. So we're going to go through the home, we're going to pray, we're going to anoint it in the name of Jesus Christ, and I am sending notice to every demon in hell right now that in its, in, that's in your home, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are going to be evicted today, tonight, in Jesus' mighty name. So guys, every single person on here, begin to share. If you're on Instagram, share it to your stories. Share it to your page. If you're on Facebook, put it in a watch party. Invite somebody on here. Send it to them in the messenger if you have to. Say, listen, sis, bro, you need to be on this live. I feel God moving already. I feel God moving already. It's time for us to clean house. We can't just proclaim the name of Jesus and then we go home and it's like you're living in, you feel like you're living in actual, a literal hell. Why? Many times it's because the devil has an open door there. And so we're going to talk about that. I'm not going to just talk about my opinion of things. I'm going to give you scripture and the word of God. And then I'm going to show you how to actually get rid of these things and get them out of your house the appropriate way, the biblical way. And it's going to be really good. So um, as you're jumping on, let me know what city, state, country are you watching from? Every single person on here, begin to list your city, your state. And share, we are getting this room filled up. I'm trying to see. I got a notification. All right, amazing. Hey, Lashana, I want to call you guys' names out. Let's see who's on. Tanika, Kathy, Teresa. Come on, Erica. All of you guys begin to share this. You know, I say it all the time. When you guys share this, you're sharing the gospel. You're helping somebody else on your page get set free. We don't know what they're dealing with, but in the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare that this will go forth unhindered in Jesus' mighty name. I feel God moving already. Come on, somebody. This will go unhindered in the name of Jesus. And we're going to start cleaning out our houses. We're not going to go into 2021 with stuff in our houses that's given demons legal rights. And yes, it is absolutely possible. So come on. Continue to share. Let me know. I see California. I see Florida. I see Boston. What's going on? Come on. Get out your anointing oil. Get out the olive oil. If you have not separated, consecrated it unto the Lord, I'm going to pray over it with you. I'm going to show you how 
to consecrate it so that you will have anointing oil in your home. We need to be equipped in the name of Jesus. We are over 500 people. That's amazing. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. I'm going to share. I'm going to go to my page right now. And I'm going to share to my personal page. And I'm going to share to a few different groups. Toronto, Canada. Come on. New Jersey's in the house. Yes. Thank you. Mary's tagging people. Ms. How are you? Heavenly 8173. Come on. I see Toronto. I see St. Louis. Hello. Hi, Megan. How are you, Christina? Blessings to you as well. Come on. Keep sharing. Put this in the core group. If you're in my mentorship group, put it in the core group. Let all the students know it's time to clean house. Come on. Type that in the comments, will you? It's time to clean house. How many of you believe that God is calling you to do a full clean out? You might have done it already, but over time and when you go on trips and you get different gifts from people and you go to different stores and you accumulate stuff, sometimes things can just creep on in. And trust me, the devil is not foolish. He actually, well, he's a fool, but he's very strategic about getting things in your home because he knows that if he can get the things in your home, then he can have the legal right to run up in your home and wreak havoc. I see him doing to Christians all the time. So keep sharing. Come on, we're over 600 people, almost to 700 people right now, over 100 or 100 here in Instagram. That's right, it's time to clean house. It is time to clean house. Let me share this really quick here. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you all the glory for tonight. We trust you, God. We know that you're with us right now. We will fear no evil. You are with us. Come on. We're not scared of any demons. We're not scared of any evil. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're cleaning out the house. We're getting rid of all the, the stuff that's coming. And I'm going to clear up some questions as well. Some things, some comments people are putting, they're saying that, hey, you don't need to have that in your home. In all honesty, it's inaccurate. It's not. It, it may be for them but it is not across the board. And so we have to also be very careful about being religious with things. We have to be very careful about being legal, too legalistic when it comes to the, uh, the supernatural because you can get very legalistic. And before you know it, you have one couch and one chair in your house and one outfit and you're just scared to do anything. That's not how God wants us to live in the name of Jesus. So we are going to come against the spirit of fear, we're going to come against confusion in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray that the gift of discerning of spirits will be activated in your life so that you can lean on the Holy Ghost to tell you, uh-uh, something's wrong about that. I know it looks pretty. I know we went to the Bahamas and we grabbed it. I know it's so gorgeous and we really, really like it. We spent a lot of money on it, but it's got to go. That's why we need the gift of discerning of spirits. That's why we need to be led by the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Give me an amen in the comments. If you're ready to walk through this process with me, then I want you to put a one in the comments. Say, I'm ready. I'm going to stay on this broadcast and I'm going to walk this. I'm going to walk it out with you. So we're going to list some things. We're going to go over my entire list. I know you guys have a list, but I have a, I have a big list. <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about some things. I'm going to give you some scripture. We're going to anoint some oil. We're going to consecrate it. I should say pray over it. And then I'm going to show you how to anoint your house. And we're going to do that in eight steps. And it's going to be amazing. We're over 800 people. Keep sharing the video, guys. That is amazing. God is clean in house. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare, tonight is the night your house is getting in order. All of a sudden, you're going to get your sleep back. I feel God. I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, your children are going to stop having nightmares in the mighty name of Jesus. All of a sudden, your children are going to stop lashing out in uh, this terrible aggression and rebellion and anger out of nowhere. All of a sudden, you're going to see that sickness is just breaking off of your body. We are closing every door. The devil thinks he's sneaky, but God is shining the light on every scheme, on every plan of the enemy right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go forth. Come on. We're only five minutes in and God is already moving. Put up a one in the comments if you're going to go all the way through with me. Now, I'm going to say some things, and I, I already know that some people are not going to agree with me. That's okay. 
okay? We don't have to just swear people off and just, oh, she said I have to throw this out. I'm not going to follow her anymore. Guys, let's be, let's be mature Christians about this as I go forth, okay? This is what I have been, this is what's been laid on my heart. I've come out of the occult. I've come out of witchcraft. I've come out of the religion of Wiccan. I understand what objects and items in the home mean. I understand that that covenant, I understand the rights, the legal rights that they hold. And so many Christians are perishing. When I say perishing, I mean your joy has been stolen and destroyed, your peace, your sleep, you can't connect to people. Relationships are broken because the enemy kills, steals, and destroys. And people perish because of lack of knowledge. And so today, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will come into the knowledge of God. You will come into the knowledge that God wants you to have a household that is holy, sanctified, consecrated, and separated unto him and him only. And every demon that's creeping and crawling, I, I can see them right now in the realm of the spirit. They are literally trembling they are trembling because they know they have been found out. They know that the hiding place has been up. They know that all of a sudden there's a bright light from heaven shining on them. They love to hide in darkness. They love to creep and crawl. They love to stay hidden. They love to put you in a place where you actually are in total ignorance of what they're doing. And they'll say, oh, they're just being extreme. That's what demons say when you try to get them out. When you say, hey, we can't watch that anymore. The very first thing that demons say is, you're being too much. Come on. It's not that deep. Um, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, so you'll be fine. Why? Because they want you to be in a place of ignorance where you don't come into knowledge so that they can continue to wreak havoc on your life. Guys, keep sharing this. Come on. We're almost over a thousand people in the name of Jesus. Every home, every home, every replay viewer right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that deliverance comes to your house in the name of Jesus for you, Marilyn Baker, for you, Misty, Melissa, in the name of Jesus, Rosalind, in the name of Jesus, deliverance is coming to your homes tonight. Eddie, in the name of Jesus, deliverance is coming to your home tonight. Nancy, in the name of Jesus, deliverance is coming to your home tonight. Uniquely, Kanika, deliverance is coming to your home tonight. The real Tan Ta Taylor, the, the deliverance is coming to your home tonight in the name of Jesus. All right, so let me go forth. I'm not going to be before you long because we have a good amount of stuff to cover. I have an entire list of things that do not need to be in your home. And in all honesty, this is my generalized list. This is the generalized list. So I could put one word and I'm going to go into five different things that fall into that category. So this is my list. And then we have eight steps. How to anoint your home, close every door, and welcome in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Just broke over a thousand. There's over a hundred people on Instagram. God is moving already. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you would draw them in. Father, I thank you that you would completely take control of this broadcast. I thank you, Father God, that when people watch it, they will know that your power, your glory, and your, your honor is real. And that you are going to deliver them in, with a mighty hand tonight in the name of Jesus. Let me give you a scripture right off the bat. Somebody write this on the screen. Put it in the comments. Come on. I see so many amazing people on right now. So many amazing people. Yes, that's right. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 7. Let's start it. Mm, let me see. Let's let me read verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26. You guys got that? Put it in the comments. Deuteronomy 7, verse 26. This is what the Bible says about cursed items, idolatry, items that belong to the demonic realm. It says, nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly arbor it, for it is an accursed thing. 
God is telling us in his word, do not bring any abominations into your home. And he's actually giving us a warning about what will happen if we have cursed demonic items in our home, abominations in our home. He says, you'll be doomed to destruction just like it. Come on, somebody. Somebody give me an amen in the comments if you believe the word of the Lord. And this is in Deuteronomy 7, verse 26. God's word tells us, do not bring these items into your home. I was bringing items into my home, guys, when I was practicing witchcraft. I was not bringing them in by accident. I was bringing them in on purpose. Absolutely. I would go to the New Age store where I could get crystals. I could get bundles of sage. I'm not talking about sage that you throw on a little piece of chicken and you cook. I'm talking about sage bundles for the purpose of burning to rid your home of evil spirits. That's what witches do, guys. That's what many people in the Native American community do. It is not biblical. It is not of God. We don't need to do that. You can get rid of evil spirits by the authority that Jesus Christ gave you when he said, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And nothing will harm you. Where you use the name of Jesus against evil. You don't need sage against evil. It is a, it is a cursed thing. It is a, de a demonic open door. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If this video over here on Instagram is pausing, I urge you to go over to the Facebook Jump over to the Facebook if you have a Facebook and go to Jenny Weaver Worships and watch it there. Don't allow the, the enemy to get into this, the technology. Go over there if you have Facebook. And so God's telling us he doesn't want us to have abominations in our home. I was bringing them in willingly. I was bringing in crystals. I was bringing in spell books. I was bringing in angel cards. I had every book on astrology and reading the stars and the signs. I had all kinds of artwork, shirts that would say, I'm a Capricorn and I like coffee. Like I'm talking about guys, I, everywhere you looked, there was something that was an abomination to God. And that's why the house that I lived in was full of demons. That's why I got full of demons. And had to go through major deliverance and have demons cast out of me. Come on. I know what I'm talking about. I have walked this road. And I understand how they can get in. I remember walking around and seeing shadows following me. I, I would literally think that people were in the house. You couldn't convince me that a person had not creeped in the house. Because I would see full on figures of people out of the corner of my eye. And I would be gripped with fear. And I would turn and, who's that? And it would disappear. Scratching on the walls. Knocking through the walls on the outside of the house where my bedroom was. Where there would be no, there would be, you couldn't have a person there. I remember living with Stephen, who's my husband now. We were living in a meth house. And as God is my witness... I, I pray to God that we find this picture because it's unreal. I said, take a picture of me. And it was, there was light outside. The window was open. He took a picture of me. And I remember months going by, we looked at the picture and there was a, it looked like an Indian woman was standing behind me. And so in all honesty, we were, we were addicted to drugs. So what we did was we took the picture to his family, the sober people in the family. And we said, who is this person? Do you know that person? And they, they looked at the picture and said, no, we don't know that person. But what we didn't say that, that there wasn't a real person there. We just let them look at it. And they immediately said, whoa, who is that? Who is that lady? There wasn't a lady. There wasn't, it was, it was a demon, guys. It was a familiar spirit trying to look like some Native American, in all honesty, because they're deceiving spirits. Come on, is this blessing you? Is this helping you? And so God's word tells us to 
get the items out of our home. Items in your home that are new age items that the enemy uses to deceive people, that people go to instead of the power of God, that people make idols instead of worshiping the Lord your God and only the Lord your God. The enemy will use these things and then that is his legal right. I was reading, I was reading a scripture in the Bible in Leviticus and it actually was really interesting. I, I called Pastor Sweeney, he's a pastor that raised me. I said, what was that story you, you preached on years ago about the idols, the hidden idols? And he gave me the scripture and actually what I was looking for, I didn't find, but God showed me something else and I want to show it to you guys right now. I want to show you this because it was revelation that hit me as I was studying for tonight. I just got this a little bit ago and I was just amazed. Keep sharing. Come on, we're at 1,300 people right now. Listen to this. Thank you, Jesus. I feel God already. Come on, somebody. Oh, look, God, let me be able to find it. In the name of Jesus. Leviticus. I believe it is. Ooh, where is it? If I can't find it, I'm going to just show you. I'm just going to give it to you the way that I remember it. I'll just do that. And so basically what's happening in the story is Jacob... He's got Rachel, he's got Leah, and Laban, he's having a conversation with Laban and there's stuff going on. And the gist of the story is Rachel steals her father's household idols. He, she actually takes the idols. They're about to leave, they're getting out of there, and she, for some reason, has some connection to these items. And she steals them, she puts them in the camel's satchel. She hides them in there and they take off, they leave. And Laban begins to pursue and come after Jacob. And he says, you, you steal my daughters, you take my stuff. Jacob has no idea that his wife has stolen these idols. No idea. Hold on, let me block people because the devil's trying to already stir stuff up. If you, if you talk disgusting and nasty on this post, on this video, you will be blocked immediately. And so he pursues them and he's coming after them aggressively. And the Bible says that he actually goes through their tent. He's tearing it all up. He's actually looking for these idols. And I'm reading it, trying to find the scripture that I really wanted. As Sarah said, Leviticus 19. Yes, I think you are right. I, I'm looking for the scripture that I really wanted and it was amazing to me to see that he pursued these idols with such aggression and as I was telling my husband about it because I actually was asking my husband can you please tell me where this scripture is I'm looking for I said I got this one and all I see from this one is that Rachel stole the idols and Laban comes after them aggressively let me go to it since the woman of God just put it up on the screen for me. Come on. You guys are going to be blessed by this. Wait till you see this. This is what God revealed to me about demons and these cursed items. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, okay. Mm -mm. I got it. Thank you, God. I apologize. I just found it. <laughs> it is in Genesis. It actually is in Genesis. And if you go back to chapter 30, and this is what it says. Hold on. I'm getting there. No, chapter 31, verse 17. Jacob rose and set his sons and wives on camels. And he carried away all of his livestock and his possessions, which he gained. And he had acquired livestock, which he gained in Padan, Iran. 
and he went to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole the household idols, which were her father's. And then it says that he rose and he went. Now listen. And Laban followed them. He pursued them. And Jacob, let me say this. And Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and in the two maidens' tent. He did not find them. And then he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's tent. And now Rachel had taken the household idols and put them into the camel's saddle and sat on them. And Laban was so aggressive. And, and actually Jacob has a conversation with him and he says, why are you troubling us? Why are you pursuing us like this? And God revealed it to me right then and there. He said, demons come for their stuff aggressively, just like that. She literally wanted this item so much that she hit it and sat on it. Why? Why would she do this? She had a connection to this demonic abomination before the living God. Come on. Keep sharing because this is good. And I saw Laban and I saw in the spirit realm. I said, okay, God, this is how demons, they go and they find their stuff. They say, wait, that belongs to me. You have my stuff in your house. And they come on in and they sit on it and they set up camp right in your home. Then all of a sudden you got migraines you can't explain. All of a sudden you just lost sleep and you've been able to sleep fine your whole life. But you came back from the thrift store with a whole bunch of stuff and now all of a sudden you are plagued with night terrors, seeing shadows, hearing noises. Your children are screaming from nightmares now. You're seeing all kinds of stuff. What's happening? There's an open door. There's an open door. How do we get rid of these things? I'm going to tell you how to get rid of them the biblical way. And I'm going to also give you my list. And then we're going to anoint some oil. I want to read you this. This is from a book. I love this book. It's called Clean House, Strong House. It is by Kimberly Daniels. She's known as a deliverance minister. Uh, some people call her the demon buster. She actually said she was doing deliverance on someone. And the demon called her that. You're the demon buster. That's what he said. So, this is what she says. An accursed thing. In the book of Joshua, the spirit of death was transferred to Achan and his family when he partook in an accursed thing. This is in Joshua 7. We must note that the things that we partake in, they do affect us. They also affect our bloodline. You guys, if you have a connection to a book, if you've got things, open doors in your house, and you're like, this is not that big of a deal, and your children have been tormented, they are suffering because of decisions of the parents, of the, the head of the household. Does that make sense? Apparently, there was something attached to itself, attached itself to Achan and all that he owned. God commanded that it be burned. Come on. Let me read that to you. Now, Joshua said to Achan, my son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him. Now, tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against God the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I have done. When I saw, when I saw among the spoils, a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. I coveted them. Come on. Somebody catch that in the realm of the spirit. He coveted these items. And then he said, and I took them and there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent. He literally took this item and went and hid it in his tent in the earth and with the silver under it. And Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, 
his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tents, and all that he had. They brought, then they brought them all out to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. Guys, playing with demonic things is not okay. It is not, oh, they're just making a big deal. No, guys, this is, this is everything. This is your children's livelihood. This is your peace, your sleep, your purpose and destiny in God. When you bring these things in and demons have a hold of them, they have access to your life. And so they took them out. And guys, they, they stoned them. They took everybody out. That's how serious they were about breaking God's commandment and bringing these abominations into your home, into your tent and disobeying God. And really it all started with him coveting these items. Come on. Somebody, if you're hearing me, if this is blessing you, I want you to type a one in the comments. Come on, Christy. Come on, Gilbert, Beverly. Let me get my notes. Hidden things. Things that you may not want anybody to know about. We're going to talk about all of those things. Pornography. I'm going to talk about the books. Yes, I'm going to talk about those love books. Some of you ladies have in your house where it looks like Fabio is on the cover rescuing some lady on a horse and you look through the book and it's nothing but filth and trash. And that's how you, that's how the spirit of lust can come on. And he's like, that belongs to me. That those words, I inspired those words. This is how demons talk. They, they know that that's their item. They can come on in. So we're going to anoint some oil. Oil is a symbol of the power of the Holy Spirit. It's symbolic your faith in God's ability to protect, to make things holy. Come on, somebody. To get rid of evil. The oil drives out evil spirits. That's why when we make it today, the devil's going to try to tell you that it, it doesn't really work. He's a liar. Somebody type that in the comments. The devil is a liar. I know I see all your questions. I'm going to go through an entire humongous list right now of things you need to go ahead and get out of your home. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that while you're watching this, some of you need to actually get delivered. Some of you, you need the curse broken off of you. You need that connection, that tie to this item to be broken. In the name of Jesus, there's almost like a covenant with some of these things. You swore you'll never get rid of them. That's a covenant with them. I don't care how expensive they are. They got to go. It's not worth it. It's not worth having in your home in the name of Jesus. Now, when you start getting rid of things today, you know, I, I urge you to do it as soon as possible. Don't wait. Do not wait. And yes, you are qualified because the blood of Jesus qualifies you to get rid of it. When you're getting rid of these things, can I just tell you this? Because I know some of you are going to ask me. You're living with a husband or a wife or maybe even a roommate, an adult. And they have some of these items that I'm going to cover. You guys, you'll bring a lot of strife into your home. If you just start throwing people's stuff away. Now, I know you want to do it and I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, can we just throw everybody's stuff out? But you need to be very wise. That's why ask the Lord for the spirit of wisdom. Ask the Holy Ghost to guide you. Say, God, I'm praying for the gift of discerning of spirits that I can, I can know what spirit is behind a thing. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I see five people said they're ready. Is anybody else ready? Is anybody else ready? And don't just start throwing stuff in the trash. Wait until I show you and instruct you biblically on what the Lord says we are to do. Okay? I know you want to go through the house, put the live down right now. And you want to start going and getting rid of everything. But just hold on. That's why God brought you here. Here is my list. Cursed items. And these are basically things that will be open doors for demons. Whether you believe it or not, they are. I've seen it firsthand with almost everything on here. Let me go ahead and just start with demonic movies. 
Demonic movies mean hor horror movies, horrific scenes, vulgar things. Guys, remember your eye gate, your ear gate. The Bible says your eyes full of light, your whole body will be full of light. Your eye is in darkness, the whole body is full of darkness. Your eye is a gateway to your spirit and your soul. I've talked about this before. They call it entertainment. What is the first part of the word? Enter. I've seen a just really powerful artist draw someone watching the TV and they, they, they drew, uh, they were watching a horrific movie and they drew the spirit of violence coming out at the person and literally grabbing the person by the head. Be careful about these demonic movies, movies that have lust in it, movies that have witchcraft in it, it's sorcery. You know what movies are okay to watch and what movies are not okay to watch. I wouldn't sit around watching The Craft. I wouldn't sit around watching, uh, what is the movies with The Nun? It was a horrific movie. I don't even know the names of the stuff. I do not watch horrific movies. I don't watch scary stuff. I Even when it comes to like extreme violence, I don't let that into my spirit. It bothers me. It, it bothers me a lot. I'm even careful of what things I click on when I'm on YouTube, when I'm going through social media. I remember one time I watched something and it, 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 it got to me. It really did. It actually, I had fear, the spirit of fear that came into the house. And I actually watched a woman, this was a real life video on Facebook. They kept sharing it, sharing it, sharing it. I said, let me see what's going on. It, 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 I was so curious. I said, let me watch it. And it was a woman who was completely drugged out of her mind and she had her infant in the room with her. Somebody was filming this and she was picking up the infant child and she was slamming the infant down because she was completely out of her mind. She had, her clothes were gone. And when I saw that, I actually got up and ran to my husband and I was so shaken. I said, oh, I just saw the most horrific thing. I couldn't even sleep. Be careful what you let in your spirit. He said, don't watch anything else on that Facebook. He was like, you would get Facebook off your entire phone. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying be careful what you are letting your spirit. And then all of a sudden you're watching movies filled with rage. And then you're at work and you just feel angry and full of rage and revenge at your boss and your coworkers. And where is it coming from? There's an open door. Tarot cards. These are obvious things. Angel cards. You guys, Christians, get these things out of your house. Astrology books, pictures, images, clothing. If it's got a whole bunch of stars and um, Capricorn this and you're a Virgo that. No, you're not. You're not that. You are a child of God. You are not a Capricorn. You are not a Virgo. You're not a Cancer. You are a child of God. You have to get rid of that stuff in the name of Jesus Christ. They are absolute open doors for demons. Ouija boards. That's obvious. You guys, come on now. But I got to cover it because if I don't, someone will say, well, she didn't mention that. Any recordings of psychic readings. If you had somebody pass away in your family and you went to a psychic and they gave you the recording of, you know, them connecting with the person that passed away. It was not connecting with the person that passed away. That is a familiar spirit. That's what they're conjuring up are demons. You need to get rid of any connection to that. Uh, blood items, guys. Listen to this. And my prayer director actually gave me this example. She said that her someone in her family, they lost their child in an accident. And there was a bloody shirt from the accident and they kept it and they held on to it. It was full of blood. You, you need to get rid of those things. You have to get rid of those things. I know it may be very, it may be a very traumatic and sorrowful thing to have to let them go. You may feel so connected to it. It's almost like it's a part of you. That'll let you know right there, there's a, a connection that does not need to be. Okay, you have to let those things go. Santeria beads, books on it, anything to do with that, get it out of your house. Dream catchers, this is a big one. I understand that people think they're very cool. 
it's a like a bohemian thing now. It's like a hippie kind of vibe. I don't do vibes either. <laughs> you got to get the dream catchers out your room. Get them out your car. And people are driving around with these dream catchers and their rear view mirrors. I'm just like, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would reveal to them that that thing has to go. And, and that comes from Native Americans. They put up, they made these dream catchers and they believe that these dream catchers are going to catch in the web evil spirits from giving you nightmares. Guys, that is not biblical. You can't find it in the Bible. That's dibbling and dabbling in stuff you do not want to be a part of. Dream catchers do not catch evil. They release evil. Somebody go and hashtag that. Crystals. Now hear me when I say this. People are, this crystal is a huge trend right now. Even in the church, it's, it's crazy for me to say it, but it's true. Guys, we all have almost 1,500 people on this live. Keep sharing. Everybody who has not shared yet, I'm asking you to share the broadcast. This is going to help somebody. Crystals. If I have crystals in my home, in my home, I say, this one I got is for healing and this one is for protection and this one is for this and this one is to uh, give me strength. The devil is a liar. The joy of the Lord is my strength and I will only have the Holy Ghost's power. No other power. There is no other power. They are absolutely powerless. And they are connections and doorways for demons. Demons love when Christians bring crystals in their home. Especially when they go, oh, I don't believe it actually does anything. I just want a bunch of crystals right here on my dresser. I'm going to line them all up. I'm going to put a few candles over here just because I think it's pretty. The devil is really deceiving people. Like, is that deep? Okay. So crystals that have some sort of purpose and power in your house no that's new age garbage get it out somebody type that in the comments get it out pendulums these evil eye bracelets and evil eye necklaces they're they're like a huge trend right now do not wear that stuff do not have that in your house don't let your kids have that get it out somebody type in get it out sage for the purpose of burning. Yes, I'm going there. I'm going there with the most people on live so that everybody can hear me say this. I'm not talking about sage that you sprinkle on some chicken and cook with. I'm talking about bundles of sage that people burn talking about they're getting, you know, the atmosphere right. They're getting rid of the evil. Now the enemy has convinced people that it's actually for sanitizing the room how is that no guys that's that's deceiving spirit it's not true if you need sanitizer that bad get some lysol do not burn sage like the native americans have done like witches do and through your house and you you have the holy ghost or maybe you don't but you need them we got to get that out of our house do not allow sage in your house like that. I'm telling you what I know. It is an open door for demons. As soon as they see it, they're going, yeah. All right, guys, come on in. We can set up camp here. This is a door for us. This is a legal right. We can be here now. We couldn't be here before, but now you got this in your house. You've come into alignment with it. So now we can come into alignment with your house. And everything in your house, your children, your sleep, your finances, your body, your everything. And that's a fact. All right. That's why the Bible says don't give the devil a what? A foothold where he can actually get in. He can get a hold of you. Okay. Uh, let me keep going. Statues of saints. No, we don't have statues of saints. We don't have any other God but, but the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. I'm not praying to saints. I, I don't even want statues of them because the purpose of the statue is for people to worship it. Whether you do or not, that's why it was made. Okay? No, we're going to talk about Z. You must have just jumped on. Do not throw anything out yet until we cover how to get rid of this.
properly because I think it will shed light on some of these things, okay? And then we can go from there and then we're going to anoint the oil. I'm going to show you how to pray over oil. If you have olive oil, you might as well go ahead and get some out right now and get it ready. I'm halfway done with the list, so let's keep going. Rosary beads. They got to go, guys. It's an open door. It's an open door. We don't sit there and rub beads to try to get forgiveness. Honestly, I mean, Christians, you should know better. And, and really, it's, it blows my mind that it's even accepted by even the Catholic faith. And I have, I know people that are Catholic, beautiful, amazing people, truly are amazing people. And they love the Lord, but th that they're being deceived by that. You can't find that in the Bible, that you are to have these beads, that you are to pray to saints, that you are to, you know, go to a priest and you can only talk to him and you can't go to Jesus. That There's so many scriptures that I could give you right there that just throw that out. So we just continue to, God will open their eyes, but you need to get rid of rosary beads. I don't care if you're just wearing them for fashion. Get them out. Gargoyle statues, that same with um, dragon statues. Buddha statues, you guys should know this. Any religion that is not a God, the one true God, any artifacts that are not, really any artifacts, honestly, that have been created for other religions, you need to get them out of your house immediately. And a lot of you were going, oh my goodness, I didn't realize that that thing I had in my garden was a statue and I've had all this trouble in my home. It has a legal right. Pornography. Come on, if I'm helping you, put a one in the comments. If I'm helping you at all, put a one in the comments. Pornography, guys. Videos, books. Let me cover the books again. I know people that love these books. What are they called? Um, I don't even know. Love, stories, the, the, the whole series. Like I said, again, it's got the Fabio guy on the cover. And you open the books, and I'm telling you, it is nothing but pornography. It is an open door for the spirit of lust. When lust comes in, you can guarantee they're not just going to operate alone. They're going to call in some other forces and powers of darkness and other demons because they know how to establish real strongholds. And if they can come into a Christian's home, I, I'm telling you, that's where they want to infiltrate. Okay. It's a romantic series. You got to get those books out of your house. I hope I'm helping somebody. I don't care how much it's entertaining you. It's not worth it. Okay, let me keep going. Yoga paraphernalia. Now, I know it probably lost 500 people right there. But if you do your study on it, you will see that that could be an open door. Truly, it is. You can just stretch if you need to stretch. You don't have to get into yoga. And I may do a whole series on that to explain why, because I know people are going to go, I don't get it. And there's a lot to it. Just trust me when I tell you, there's a lot to it. And I used to do it. Okay. So there's a lot to it. Music can be an open door. If this is helping you say, amen, it's helping me. Certain music. I remember listening to Amy Winehouse. And I'm just going to give you my personal testimony with Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse was known as a, a singer who was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And so she was known as being someone that was really just out there. Well, I should have known better. Years ago when I was in the world, I loved Amy Winehouse. I listened to her all the time. I could sing every song. I, I mean, I literally listened to it almost 24-7. And so then I got saved. And I was just going through YouTube one day and it popped up. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's my song. And I started to play it. And the whole, my whole being changed. I was like, I started to remember things from when I heard that song and I was in that situation. It literally took me there. 
And I would just play it and play it and play it. And the next thing I know, I'm losing sleep. As God is my witness, you can ask my husband. He's in the kitchen right now listening. I was losing sleep. And my husband said, it's that Amy Winehouse. He said, you are, you're opening a door because that music is what you listen to when you were in that dark place. And now that door is back open and that music was pulling me to that place. The words are pulling me to that place. Even the song she sings, trying to make me go to rehab. I said, no, no, no. Guys, a girl that got out of a rehab and is living a, a, a life that's good and clean does not need to be listening to that kind of music. Come on. So be careful what you're letting in your house. Be careful what your kids are listening to. I don't care what's popular on TikTok. My daughter can't listen to everything. I don't care. I'm tell I tell her, uh, excuse me, turn that off. I I'm not trying to be your best friend. I'm accountable to the Lord for your soul. Um, African face mask. Guys, be careful what you have in your home. They create those African face masks for the purpose of voodoo and all kinds of stuff. So when you bring that into your home, you're opening doors. Any kind of shrine, Halloween decor, you've got a whole bunch of demonic skeletons and jack-o'-lanterns. If you do the whole study on that, you've got all that in your attic ready to pull it down for next year. And you wonder why there's just, ha just the devil is wreaking havoc on your home. You've got ghosts and goblins and all kinds of demons. Uh, demons. Why are they in your home? I don't understand this. I know that people are like, you're just being extreme. No, I don't care what you think. It is what it is. You can't have that stuff just sitting in a Tupperware somewhere waiting for Halloween next year. So you can pull it all down. You got to get it out your house. All right, here we go. Harry Potter books. They got to go. Every last one of them and the whole series, the games, the clothes, the glasses, the wand, the whole thing. All Harry Potter's got to go. You guys, that whole thing was created in the depths of hell. Demons came up with that, not people. And they're getting your children to say along with them spells and your children to fantasize about being sorcerers and magicians. And then when your kids go out into the world, they don't see a problem with witchcraft because they have literally be, they've been trained in your house that it is okay. So yeah, I said it, Lord of the Rings, same thing, goes in that same category. Demonic statues, got to go. Masonic pledges, anything to do with Freemasonry, got to go. It's out your house. Anything to do with secret societies, come on, keep sharing this. We're at over 1,500 people. God is moving. Demonic video games, Dungeons and Dragons, anything to do with that, it has got to go. Be careful with these video games, guys. There's a lot of violence, murder. Or the, the children are actually fantasizing. They put themselves into the role of the character and they go around killing everybody and shooting them up. And then when you, interview, when you see these people that have actually done this in real life and you interview them and say, what do you do all day? What have you done all day? Oh, I played this game all day. They put themselves in that position and it was completely normal for them to just go shooting people up. They get so ingrained in these games that they have trouble separating fake and reality. I know what I'm talking about. Come on. Candles for new age. I'm not talking about just regular candles. I'm talking about candles. If you look at certain candles, they have been made for new age practices. And you look at them, you go, whoa, what's all that symbolism on there? What is all this, the healing candle, the this candle, the that candle? Uh-uh. It's got to go. Okay. I've even seen candles um, with pictures of saints on them like the Virgin Mary and people light them for the purposes of doing this like altar. Absolutely not. That is not of God. We're to worship the Lord, our God and him only and serve him only. And I'm not lighting a candle to not near a person. 
That's how we say in the South, not Nair. That means nobody. Nobody's getting a candle lit for them at all. Let me keep going. Pokemon out. Got it. Listen, <laughs> parents, be wise in this season. You are the watch gate for your household. You are the watchman, I should say. And you are to watch over your children's souls. They may not like you, but that's okay. We're not here to be liked. We're here to do the will of the Lord. And one day they'll understand, like I understand why my mom came in my room when I was young. And she saw I had Janis Joplin CDs and Jimi Hendrix CDs and Nirvana and Marilyn Manson. You know what my mother did with my CDs? She broke them. And I literally gritted my teeth in rage and a spirit of rebellion. And I wanted to actually murder her for breaking those CDs. And I went to the store and I stole them all over again. And then I hid them in my room. And I listened to Janis Joplin. And she said, do not listen to Janis Joplin. She died of a heroin overdose. You are not allowed to let that in your spirit. And I did it anyway. And later on, I became a heroin junkie to the point where I couldn't even get out of bed. I had to get on methadone just to wean myself off the heroin so I didn't die from completely going cold turkey and putting my entire body in shock. I know what I'm talking about. I've been there and done that. Native American items, drugs. Guys, open door. When I was in witchcraft, I took drugs for the purpose of opening my spirit up to gods, goddesses, deities, the spirit world, demons. That was the purpose of it. Pharmakia, you cannot open this door. If you guys see any comments that are not good, please just let me know so that I can get rid of the person because I want everything to be go forth without being hindered and I do not like distractions when God is trying to speak to his people and get this house in order. Celtic items. I wrote this. Guys, we do not worship angels. We thank God for angelic assistance and the Bible talks about angels that will come and assist us and we can pray and ask the Lord. To send angels to help us and to do his will, not our will. They don't, they don't do our will, by the way. They only do what the Lord says to do. They hearken unto his voice. We do not worship angels. If you have a whole bunch of angels in your house and you have literally made it like an idol, one, you need to repent. And two, you need to get rid of them. If they are idols. I'm not saying that you can't have an angel in your house or, you know, a picture but I am saying that people have made idols out of angels and it is not okay. The Bible says, there's scripture in Revelation that says, do not worship me. The angel actually told him, told John, don't worship me. Soul tie items. Let me cover this because someone asked me and I want to make sure I cover it. If you were in a toxic relationship, an unhealthy relationship, a relationship that was just not good. And the, let's say it's a boyfriend and he was very abusive and you know, just toxic, and he gets you a teddy bear. You guys are no longer together. It's been years. You have the teddy bear in your closet. Why do you have that item? Get rid of it. You don't need that item from this person. You're not with them anymore. And so have you ever just been sitting around and all of a sudden just images of them just flash through your mind and you just have the urge just, I want to call Tyrone again. No, don't call Tyrone. Get the bear and the little gems that he gave you and the little card, the chocolate box, all the little love letters and all that stuff. And this is a soul tie, an ungodly soul tie. You need to remove the items. Okay. There's no reason for you to keep them. Okay. Yin and yang symbols. I already talked about Virgin Mary statues. Guys, this is a big one. Descendant dolls. These are dolls. Um, it's, I don't know if it's Nickelodeon or, or Disney. I don't know what it is, but it is some sort of show where the dolls are witches and they have all these magical powers and stuff. They just, that's what they are. Now they sell these dolls in the store. My daughter has never been allowed to watch the show, has never seen it. I don't even listen. When we walk by the store, I'm like, I can't believe they're even selling these dolls and, and Christians are buying them up left and right. What do you think the children are pretending when they play with these dolls do you think that they're pretending that they're in church getting filled with the holy ghost or do you think that they're pretending to do witchcraft and 
spells and all this magical power stuff when they're playing with these dolls and they're fantasizing about actually being a part of this doll's life. Jen said, oh, oh boy, my house is going to be empty after this. Come on. I'm with you. We're going to do it together. And then other dolls as well. If you sense that there's something in, in, on a doll, if you got a doll from a thrift store and it's been in your house, you're just like, that doll gives me the creeps. Why is it still in your house? <laughs> you know, I'm not saying be overly like, oh my gosh, everything's got to go. We can't have any toys. No, no. Come on now. But be led of the Lord. We don't know what happened with that doll before it got to the thrift store. I don't know if somebody donated it to the thrift store because it had their house cursed. Now I'm bringing it into my house. All right. Um, and then be just use caution when it comes to gifts. People send me gifts every single week. We get tons of gifts and I absolutely appreciate the gifts, you guys. I love when you guys send me gifts. People find out my P.O. box. They mail me stuff. They mail me books. They mail me clothes. They mail, they mail me jewelry. They mail my daughter stuff. They mail my husband stuff. We've gotten tons of items. We've even get, um, been given money. My husband now, he goes through everything before it ever comes to me. And it is on purpose because I was opening things and there was an attachment to some of these things. They were... Um, in witchcraft, I'll just let you know that people like to give items so that that item is a point of contact. Keep sharing this video. We're at over 1,600 people. It's a point of contact. So they're giving it to you, hoping that you won't recognize it's a point of contact. And then all of a sudden, they're in your home. You're literally like, whoa, I just saw this person in my home. What are they doing? They're using witchcraft. Mm -hmm. If it's freezing up on Instagram, jump over to my Facebook. So be careful with certain gifts. If you get a check in your spirit about it, don't just try to talk yourself out of it. Why? Why talk yourself out of it rather than just get rid of it? I can't take every gift. I love people and I appreciate the thought, but I can't take every gift. I can only take into my house what God says is okay. And that includes money. I don't just take money and be like, ooh, ooh, it's money. I'm, no, 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 even if it's money. Uh, there's something not right about this, I'll say it. I don't, I don't feel right about it. Okay. Thrift store items. Yes, you can shop at a thrift store, but just be careful because you never know what the person's life was like before, you know, you got it. And can you pray over items? Absolutely, you can. Then there's some things you just have a check in your spirit about. And you just go, no, mm mm Something wrong with this one, this pair of pants, this, these curtains, this camera. I don't know what you're getting from the thrift store, but some of it, like, listen, guys, for real. The devil is on the prowl. All right. Is this helping anybody? We're gonna, I'm going to give you eight ways of how to remove the, um, of how to anoint your home and close doors. And then let me give you the scripture of how the Lord says to remove these items so that you guys aren't just throwing stuff in the trash bin and then people are just taking it back into their homes because people do go through garbage all the time. Where is the scripture? Deuteronomy 7 verse 25 says, You shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Did you hear that? So, some of you, you have maybe tarot cards, maybe angel cards, maybe an old horoscope book from back in the day, a horoscope reading. Maybe you have, I don't know, just some random books. If at all possible, burn those items. Now, of course, some items you cannot burn because they won't burn. Then you need to dispose of them in the best way possible. Just wrap it up in a bunch of trash bags and get it out your house. If you have to rip the cards up into a million pieces, get it out of your house. That's how I would recommend to do it. I remember when I was doing laundry years ago. I was doing laundry. My stepdaughter was in the house with us. Both my daughter and my stepdaughter were homeschooled. And my stepdaughter 
You know, she was a typical teenager. She was you know, rebellious. And I was the stepmom, so she was always, I don't have to listen to you. And you know, I'm like one of those little yes you do kind of ladies. And so I was doing laundry. As God is my witness, I said to my husband, I need to go in, into her room right now. I went into the room. I didn't even know what I was looking for, but I was literally led in there by the Lord. I was like, started going through drawers. You know, teenagers don't like this, but it is what it is. And I started to find stuff that just blew my mind. I found witchcraft books. I found an altar with a skeleton head and little candles and wax stripped all over it. I opened up a cupboard and I found fake bags of blood. Uh, like, you know, the blood that they give you in the hospital when you have the bags of blood. Like, you know, it was like that kind of decor. And they were pinned up to the, the wall. I found um, shirts with uh, like Pink Floyd images and stuff on it. And witchcraft stuff. And I brought my husband and I said, look at this. I saw, I saw readings and um, diaries of wanting to harm herself, wanting to harm us. Foul words that we were never allowed to say in our house that I couldn't even fathom that she would ever say anything like this. And the enemy was trying to get to her. And he was trying to get to us too. And so I brought my husband into her room and he was like just so, I feel like he was broken by what was happening because we, I was leading worship. He was a deacon at the church. We had been in a, we were in a spirit filled church. And so he gathers up all of this stuff. It was tons of it. He takes it out into the yard. She wasn't even there at this time. He takes it out into the yard and he begins to literally step on stuff and break it and bust glass and candles and all of these things and rip the pages and Set it on fire. Was it a fun experience when she got home? Found out that was what we did to her stuff? No. But to this day, she is one of the kindest, sweetest, most loving people you would ever meet in your life. And at that moment, she did take off. We were chasing her down the road. But when it all calmed down, we shared our heart with her that those things were not of God. And we did not want to see her life end up like the several years of my life that I had to suffer in witchcraft and homelessness and drug addiction because I was dabbling and stuff as a teenager. All right, keep going because I see your comments and I appreciate all the comments. So let's, that's how you get rid of stuff. So now that you know, again, if you have statues and things like that, you cannot literally burn them to the ground. Wrap them up. I would wrap them up in a trash bag. Tie it up real good. Get rid of it. Do not. Let me, let me say this. Do not. Do not give items away. Do not donate the items. Do not resell it. I don't care how much money you will get from it. Do not resell these items, guys. You are responsible. You are to actually go save the lost. So if you're not saving the loss and you're actually causing the loss to stumble, what does that say about you? Do not resell these items. Do not donate them. Do not give them away. Do not give them to a thrift shop. No. Completely get rid of them and destroy them so that people cannot get them. Amen? How many of you believe that? Do not say, oh, I'm just going to give this whole bag of witchcraft stuff to my sister-in-law. Are you serious? No. No, 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 no. Don't do that. All right, let me read you the scripture about anointing. Exodus chapter 40. Is this helping anybody? Exodus chapter 40, verse 10. I had all these bookmarks and then throughout this broadcast, somehow they just came undone. That's okay. Exodus chapter 40, verse 10. We're going to anoint some oil. If you have some olive oil in your house or frankincense oil, Go grab it. 
People ask me all the time, what do you think about essential oils? That's what they ask me, okay? Can I give you my opinion? Can I give you my opinion? Because this is my opinion. Essential oils, to me, it's like, sometimes it's like coconut oil. You know, sometimes I put coconut oil if I have a rough spot. Sometimes I'm using certain oils on my skin, actually. Um, and so here's the thing. They have people that actually are using essential oils and this, they'll say, this oil is going to give me peace of mind. How is that oil going to give you peace of mind? So it depends on the purpose of it, if that makes sense. Meaning, if you have lavender in the bathtub and it's helping your child, you know, get some sleep, okay. But if you're just like, this is going to take me and help me get a promotion at my job. No, that's not okay. That's You're using it for a power that is not God's power. Does that make sense? So I wanted to clarify that for you because I was thinking about essential oils and I was like, well, I use coconut oil. So, I mean, we could, you could do this all day long. Someone wrote on my page, don't have seashells in the house. And I had to address that I actually was one of the comments I went and I said, this isn't inaccurate because the person wrote and said, this brings marine spirits in a seashell. Guys, do you not know that the scripture says in the Bible, don't call unclean what God has made clean. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we know that there are some things that we do need to be aware of and they are idols and they are gateways for the devil. But I mean, people listed on that list every single animal in the animal kingdom. I mean, people listed butterflies. They listed blue hair dye. They listed every kind of bird. They listed frogs. I was just like, come on now. Come on now. Please. Let's not just start. Now, here's the thing. I want to say this. What is not good for one person, it may not be good for them. The Lord may give them a check in their spirit about something. Did you remember when, um, oh my goodness. I just slipped, his name just slipped out of my mind. God, bring it back to my remembrance. Samson. Samson could not cut his hair. Who remembers this? He had special instruction from the Lord. He couldn't cut his hair. He couldn't put alcohol in his body. So he had specific instructions. Is cutting your hair bad for everybody in the face of the earth, every Christian? No. But he had an assignment and he had a specific word from the Lord not to. Why? I don't know why he couldn't cut his hair. We know that it was attached to his strength, but I don't know exactly why. I'm not here to try to figure it out. I'm just here to listen and obey the Lord. Okay? All right, Exodus 40, let's get there. Chapter, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 40, verse 10 says, You shall anoint the altar of the burnt offerings and all of its utensils and consecrate the altar. And the altar shall be most holy. And you shall anoint the laver and its base and consecrate it. If I go back to verse 9, it says, You shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, okay? And so God's word says you'll anoint it and then it will be holy. The devil hates anointing oil because he understands that it's your faith that's connected to this, which is symbolic of the Holy Ghost power and God's ability to protect you, to drive out evil. He knows that that is going to connect your faith and it's going to drive his butt out. The Bible says for us to use anointing oil. Amen. Are you getting anointing oil from just any old store, from just any old website? Please don't do that. Don't do that. Be careful of the websites that you're on. Believe it or not, witches actually call it the same thing too. They call it anointing oil. So be very mindful. Do your research. Better yet, make it yourself. I got some from Israel. It says Lion of Judah on it. 
got some. I'm just gonna show y'all how how I just do it because this is actually, if you recognize this bottle right here, this is a Cracker Barrel bottle. This is a Cracker Barrel syrup bottle, <laughs> okay? Emptied out, cleaned out, and my friend gave this to me. She anointed the oil. Her and I were prayer partners. And so we're gonna anoint everything in every room. I have some other different oils. Um, some of them are like the rolling type of oil where you can roll it on. I don't prefer the, those. That's why I removed the little rolly ball because I like to have a lot of oil. All right, so you guys get your oil. I'm gonna pray over it and you can save this video and you could just replay this. I will trim some of the video out in the beginning so that when you guys play it, it will get straight to the point. Come on, come on, come on. And then I will take sections of it, like us praying over the anointing oil, and I will upload it to my YouTube channel. So that way you can just have those prayers and I will just upload the list of things I went over to a separate video as well. So I think it will help you guys to have these resources. Now I have not heard of that company. Come on, everybody. All right. So if you have oil, um, people say, what kind of oil? It's best to use olive oil or you know that um, frankincense oil is out there. It's what was brought to Jesus, frankincense. Um, and so any old just cooking kitchen oil, you know, I I just recommend that it, it is olive oil because it does have biblical references to olive oil in the Bible. It's just good, it's pure, it smells good, and it's it lasts, all right? Um, any type of olive oil is fine. You get the olive oil and you're going to separate it out, meaning it's not gonna be the olive oil that you also are using to cook with. And you just kind of like, well, we're gonna cook with it today and then we're gonna anoint over here. No, separate some out. Separate it out. So if you have to put it in a separate container or if you have to go and get a whole new bottle from the store, then go get a whole new bottle from the store. I've already given my recommendations. I see questions, but I've given my recommendations and I recommend olive oil. Any type of olive oil is fine. Okay, we good? Now that you have it separated out, we're going to consecrate it to the Lord Jesus Christ. What does consecrate mean? Consecrate means to set apart for the Lord's use. That means it is separated. That's what we are to be. We are to be separated, consecrated, uh, set aside for the purpose of God's use. Somebody say amen if you believe that. Amen, amen, amen. I'm gonna turn this up because I love some beautiful music while we pray. We're separating this out. Make sure that you get a good tight lid on it if you can. You have no idea how many times I've seen anointing oil tip over and just all of it pour out. The devil loves to just make you have no anointing oil, can't find it when you need it, you misplace it, listen, that is a lot of it is not by mistake. So, put it in a place where you know you're gonna have it. If you have to keep it in your purse, go ahead. If you have to, like mine, all of mine, if you've ever seen my videos where I'm by my window, all of my anointing oils are on my window seal. Come on, come on. All right, we got our oil. We're not gonna use this for anything else but anointing the house, anointing ourselves, anointing the people that live in our home. And that's it. In the name of Jesus. All right, so we're gonna pray over it. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you. We say that you are Alpha and Omega. We say that you are King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, we honor you today. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to completely take over right now. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to lead us and guide us in all truth. We thank you, Holy Ghost, that when we have this oil and we use it, we are combining our faith with works and we are anointing things, believing in your power and your power alone. In the mighty name of Jesus, we consecrate this oil. We set it apart. We separate it out for 
one purpose and one purpose only for the Lord Jesus Christ's purpose to pray, to anoint, to cast out demons, to drive out evil spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare that this oil is now used for the purpose of anointing. And we thank you, God, that your word says that it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. So, Father, we pray right now that this oil will be holy. It will be used for your purpose. We thank you, God, that we will see great signs, miracles, and wonders in the name of Jesus. As we anoint our bodies, we decree and declare that our bodies will be healed. As we anoint the people in our family, we decree and declare that every stronghold comes down, that every demon has to go, that they are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. As we anoint the doorways, as we anoint the windows, and we anoint the things in our home, we consecrate our home and separate it out to the service of the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, God, that the power is not in the oil, but Father God, this is a symbol of the Holy Ghost's power. We thank you, God, that we now have our faith rising, and we believe with everything within us, God, that we are going to see the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that no demon can come against what's being done right now. No demon of confusion can stand up and start speaking right now. I forbid you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from causing confusion. I forbid you from causing distractions. I forbid you from causing ignorance and a place of unknowing for God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. We seal this oil in the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. And now you have anointing oil that you can use in your home. We're going to go through the home and we're going to anoint. I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to give you eight steps of how to close doors in your home. Start doing it as fast as you possibly can. If you have to do it tonight, stay up a little later. That's okay. If you can do it tomorrow, if you're watching this later on the replay, do it as soon as you can. Don't wait. As the devil, when he knows that his gig is up, sometimes he likes to start stirring stuff up before his last, you know, before he has to go. You ever see people get delivered and like right before they're getting really delivered is the biggest scream and the biggest, ah, just whole show it's like a tantrum so that's why i say get rid of the stuff immediately someone said tears are starting to flow that's the holy ghost come on god is moving already i feel god moving this is a long time coming for some of you you need to do this number one first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove any items from the home i've already given instruction on how to do that in the video remove the items from your home then you're going to pray aloud in every single room. Obviously, if you have a roommate, unless they give you permission, and if they do, wonderful, go ahead on in there. But the rooms that you can go in. Pray aloud in every single room and invite the Holy Spirit into your home. That's the first thing that we're going to do. You're gonna go into the rooms and you're going to say out loud. Now, if you've never done this out loud, God will help you. You have to get loud, not loud, but out loud. You go into the room and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that this room belongs to you. And Holy Spirit, I invite you into this room right now in the name of Jesus. This is your space. This room belongs to you in Jesus' name. Then go to the next room and do the same thing. Inviting the Holy Spirit into every room. Number three. Somebody say three. You ready? Rebuke the forces of evil, rebuke every single demon, rebuke the powers of darkness, rebuke any principality, rebuke them. You actually have to speak to them and command them to go only in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember to use the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for whoever's sending stars. I appreciate that. So you're going to go into the room and you're going to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every demon that is in this room, go now. Remember, you've already cut ties with all the items. The items that are listed and the ones that God brought to you and said that he, then God put a check in your spirit about. You've already gotten rid of everything that gave them a legal right. 
And then, of course, you need to confess any unforgiveness, any sin, any bitterness in your heart because that's also an open door. Come on. I know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what that means, go watch either Breaking Curses video or go watch the one I did on Breaking Soul Ties or uh, what was the first one? The Dangers of Witchcraft. Go watch those videos so that you can go all the way through and know that there is no open door in your life. Now, after you tell the demons to go, number four, you're going to plead the blood of Jesus over every room and over every corner. Come on. Plead the blood of Jesus. And this is how you do it. You say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this room right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over my home. I plead the blood here. The blood is here. The, you can actually tell the devil. Devil, the blood is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. That makes them burn and scream and tremble. They hate that. It's like when you say the blood is against you, the blood is being applied to them and they hate it. They don't want the blood of Jesus at all. So you plead the blood over every room, every corner, and you plead the blood over every person in your home. If you have roommates that are into all kinds of stuff, plead the blood of Jesus over them. That doesn't mean you have to go to their door and start yelling. You can plead pleading the blood of Jesus when they're not there. You could be pleading the blood of Jesus when you're praying in your room over them. Come on. Number six, place oil over every door in the home. You can place oil over the windows. How you do it? Take a little bit of the oil on your fingertips. And what I do is I make a cross. If you go through this house, you'll see like, you'd be like, what is that on the, the wall over there? It's a cross. Finish work of the cross. Do you have to do a cross? No, but you can just anoint it. You remember when the Israelites put the blood on the door? They just put it on the door. They put a stripe across the top, stripe down the side. Okay? But I like to do a cross. And so you anoint the doors. You anoint the windows. You can anoint hallways. Anoint the hallways. Anoint closets. TV. I anointed the TV. Come on, somebody. I've anointed all the equipment that I use to do live streams with. Everything. The lights. I anointed all because it's used for ministry. And then whatever else you feel led to do, you anoint. Number seven. Before you anoint the last door, the final door in the house, you are going to command every evil spirit that has lingered to go in the name of Jesus. And then when you command that spirit to go, then you anoint that final door. We seal everything in the blood of Jesus. And you have anointed your home and closed those doors by removing their legal rights to every demon through items, abominations, accursed items, and cursed items. Those are two different things that I just listed there. You remove those things. You've repented of anything that's in your heart. You've gone in and invited the Holy Ghost in. And the Holy Ghost and you have gone through the rooms commanding demons to go and then consecrating every door, the house, the window, everything belongs to the Lord now. And it's sealed in the blood of Jesus. That's how you do it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And some of you need to anoint yourself with oil. You anoint as many times as you feel like you need to anoint. Uh, someone's saying, how often do you anoint? We anointed the home when we moved in. Before we put stuff in, the house was anointed. And then my husband felt led during the beginning of um, the shutdowns in the beginning of March. He felt led to go back through the house and anoint the house. And we were anointing the house and we were saying, no sickness can dwell in this home. We command COVID. You cannot come through the, these doors. And we were anointing our house. My husband went and he anointed the back door, the front door, the walls, the garage. I mean, everything. And so that is how you do it. I feel God moving strongly right now. Some of you are going to get free just by doing this. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Headaches are going to stop. I skipped a number. Let me go back through it one more time just to make sure. 
One, remove items. Two, pray aloud in every room and invite the Holy Spirit in. Three, rebuke the forces of evil and command them to go. Four, plead the blood of Jesus over every room and every corner. Five, plead the blood of Jesus over every person. Six, place the oil on every door, the windows, the hallways, closets, whatever you feel led to do. Seven, before you anoint the final door, command every evil spirit to leave your home, then anoint the door. And number eight, there we go. Additionally, you can walk your property. And you can also anoint the property. So maybe you want to go anoint your mailbox or I don't know, however you want to do it. But you can just go walk your property and just pray that nothing can cross the bloodline in the name of Jesus. Okay, so that was it. Thank you. That's number eight. Thank you. So in the name of Jesus, God, I just thank you for each and every person that's watching. I thank you, God, that you are helping them to clean their house. I thank you, God, that this is a part of their process of deliverance. I hear the Lord saying that now he has your attention and you will see his great hand of deliverance. For you have struggled for many years. And the Lord says that you have actually been in the dark and there has been a... a um, cover over your eyes where you weren't able to see what was going on. But the Lord says, now I bring you into a place of deliverance this night, this day. I will show you my mighty hand of deliverance and I will bring you out and I will bring you into a wealthy place and I will bring you into a place of prosperity and a place of deliverance and a place of freedom in me. In the name of Jesus, as you obey God, God is going to do the work. He is going to charge his angels to wage war against the evil that has waged war against your family, the evil that has waged war against your marriage, the evil that has waged war against your own mind. Some of you right now, under the sound of my voice, you're struggling with mental disorders where your mind, it seems like you're going insane. You are not going insane in the name of Jesus. God is healing you and restoring you and he's helping you to walk in freedom in Jesus' name. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Come on, somebody. Say, I believe it. I receive it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I wanted to find a oh, walk. Well. I wanted to put a link up. If someone on my team is on here, I want you to put a link up of the core group. In the name of Jesus, as you guys begin to do this and you get victory and you have these testimonies of things breaking off your life and breaking out of your family, I want you to testify and I want you to write me. I may not be able to write you back, but I want to be able to at least see the testimonies of what God is doing. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and that we love not our own lives even unto death. And so that's the scripture, yes? And so the word of our testimony, it helps us to overcome. Don't be embarrassed if you had some things in your house. God is bringing you into a place of freedom. Satan loves to keep people full of shame and condemnation so they can never testify. He, he tried to do it to me. He would say, don't tell that part of your story. Don't let them think that you have that in your house. Don't tell them that part of, that you were brought out of that. They're not going to want to listen to you. The devil is a liar. Come on. If this broadcast blessed you, let me know in the comments that it blessed you. If you feel like you're going through deliverance, let me know. I'll pray with you. Let me know in the comments. If you feel like, wow, I had some of these things in my house. If you had any of these things in your house, any little thing at all, I want you to say, that's me. And I want to pray with you. I want to pray right now that your eyes will continue to be open, that this is just the beginning, that God's going to continue to bring you into a great place of revelation. Come on, somebody. Like Ephesians 1, 17 says, that God will enlighten the eyes of your heart, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. If you have anything in your house, you were like, oh my goodness, you called that out, I didn't know, I didn't realize, I didn't know. Say, that's me. Look at all the people. That's me, that's me. I see the comment, I see the comment. Come on. Someone said, I sleep so good with my daughter, the king blanket. Amen. That thing has been prayed over, drenched in prayer. Come on, made by me. No, that's a good one. If God is leading you to do that, absolutely. People ask me all the time, should I get rid of my salt lamp? They, people message me like this. I feel so strongly that I need to get rid of my salt lamp. And I'm just like, well, then you don't need me. You don't need me to tell you if you feel strong about it. 
in the name of Jesus. I break and bind anything that is trying to restrict your breathing right now. I command every demon that is trying to, to grab a hold of God's people. In Jesus' name, I serve you. Notice that the blood is against you. Under the authority of Christ Jesus, I command you to loose your hold off of them now. In the name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit that has been creeping and crawling and hiding, come up and out now. Manifest and come up and out. In the name of Jesus, do them no harm. In Jesus' mighty name. I forbid you from throwing a fit. I forbid you from lashing out. Come up and out now in the name of Jesus and go. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Up and out now in the name of Jesus. Every tormentor, up and out now in the name of Jesus. Go. Go to the abyss where you belong and take every demon with you. I command the strong man that's in the person to come up and out now and go into the abyss now by the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of lust and perversion up and out now in the name of Jesus. Every bit of witchcraft come up and out now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of rage, up and out now in Jesus' mighty name. Confusion, that spirit of confusion, come up and out now in the name of Jesus. The blood is against you. The blood is against you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Someone's asking me, did I say that they had to get rid of salt lamps? No, I said, somebody wrote me and said they felt very strongly convicted about it. And so I said that they didn't need to ask me that the, the Lord was convicting them. So if he's convicting you of doing it, then by all means do it. I will do some more studying on them. I'm not really familiar with them, but I will do some more studying on them and I will give you um, what I find out. Amen. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that you're moving. We thank you that you're moving. Come on. Did this bless you? Is Mary on here? Mary, can you put up the link for my core group or my admin? Stacy, one of you put up the link for the core group, title it core group, and then put the links to make sure that there's um, a space between that so that the link can be clickable, please. If you need a mentor, then I highly encourage you to be a part of my core group. I walk the students through deliverance. We talk about strongholds. They get a weekly uh, live teaching from me. We do live prayer, um, 8 a.m. prayer. And so we have a private group and then they get um, their devotions where we up, I upload their devotions to their curriculum. There's so much that we have um, for the students and it is absolutely incredible. Join my core group. If this blessed you at all, guys, Feel free to sew. You helping helps me not have to rig all these little cameras and devices. I could actually get something really good that would actually be able to stream live. Like if you saw what I've got set up here, you'd be like, okay, we need to help this sister out. <laughs> I need to do better, <laughs> but it works for now. But you guys, sewing helps me. It is a blessing, so into good ground. Do you have to? No. But if you want to, you can. You can go to my cash app, Jenny Weaver Worships, and then put the number one or my PayPal. I had all of these links like ready to go. And then when I went to um, pin the links, nothing happened. So that's why I didn't pin it. That's why I would have had it up here the whole time. Um, or you can go to my... Website, it's JennyWeaverWorships.com, and then you can just click donate if you want to do that. But really, more than anything, I would love for you to be a part of my core group mentorship. I really would love for you guys to be a part of my core group mentorship. I guess I could take a couple of questions. You guys got any questions for me? Join my core group. I know people keep saying, I want your shirt. Hey, you need to get it. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Thank you, Jessica says, I'm so thankful that you let God uh, speak through you. 
and share this word. Amen. God bless you, sis. Thank you so much. How do you become a part of my core group? You can go to the link that's in my Instagram bio and just, and just click it. All my links will pop up and it says core group right there. Or go to JennyWeaverWorships.com and you can just scroll down the page and you'll find core group. Yay, it's pinned now. I know I had like three different links I wanted to share, but that's okay. It's okay. God bless you, woman of God says, Jenny, you're so brave, standing against a lot of things that Christians are afraid to. Come on, we gotta stand up. And now you're not afraid, now you can stand up too. Come on. Is mental illness witchcraft? Mental illness can absolutely be witchcraft. Am I going to say that every single person that's dealing with some sort of mental thing is witchcraft? No, but it absolutely can be a demonic influence. And I believe that many of the illnesses are actually demonic, okay? So, but I wanted to make it clear because people say, well, I'm dealing with this mental issue. Do I have demons? I'm not saying that for everybody, but I am saying that it is absolutely possible. Absolutely possible. I remember when the enemy uh, tried to put on me a spirit of insanity. Well, I, was, I, I felt like I was losing my mind. That was a demon. Come on, come on. All, Alzheimer's. Can Alzheimer's... Oops, let me go back. Can Alzheimer's be a spirit? Uh, yes, it can be. Okay, amen. How do we get over the spirit of fear of going into deliverance ministry? If you have a spirit of fear and you want to go into deliverance ministry then first you got to deal with the spirit of fear. If God's called you to deliverance ministry, like that's your soul ministry that you're doing, that's amazing. And really we're all as believers were called to be deliverers. The Bible says, and these signs will follow them that believe and they shall number one, cast out demons. Like that's the first thing. If you believe, that's just simple ABCs of being a Christian. But you don't see a lot of, if I said, how many people do you know that actually do deliverance and cast demons out? It would be very hard and difficult for Christians to list 10 people that they know out of hundreds of Christians. So that's kind of a sad thing. That's why I want to equip you guys to go and do what God's called you to do. So how do you get over the spirit of fear? One, you actually command that spirit of fear to leave you. And you ask the Holy Ghost to fill you with his boldness. It says that the Holy Ghost will come and he will give you power to be a witness. You lean not to your own understanding. But in everything that you do, you say, God, it, it's apart from you, I can do nothing. I'm not the deliverer. It's you in me. And you just stand and you be bold. You love God's people so much that you don't want to see them struggle. And every day you put that thing under the blood. If that spirit of fear tries to come back and say, well, you don't want to step out. What's going to happen if the demons jump on you? What's going to... The devil is a liar. That's all he does is speak his native language, which is lies. So you got to overcome that spirit of fear. When you overcome that, step right into deliverance. Amen, amen, amen. How do you discern what's God's thoughts and what's in another influence during quiet time? Oh, that's really good. So you get to know the Lord by spending more time with him. So the more time that you spend with the Lord, the more that you will be sensitive to his voice and you will know his voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger's they run from. I see... They know my voice. As soon as they hear strangers, they go, uh-uh, I'm out of here. I'm not listening to that voice. That's not, that's not God's voice. See how they just, they just distinguished it immediately? And so how do I know if my husband comes to that door and he knocks on it? He's, hey, babe, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm not going to go. Who is it? Why? Because I recognize his voice right away, right? And so it's the same with the Lord. The way I recognize my husband's voice is because I spent so much time with him. Even if he tries to prank me and tries to use a different voice, I'm going to go, that's not, that's not the pizza guy. That's you. You're playing because I know his voice that much. And so the more time that you spend with the Lord, the more you'll be sensitive to his voice and you'll lean to his voice. And when another voice comes, you'll go, uh-uh, that doesn't sound like my father. I can't, I can't listen to that, including your own. He will go, I want to make sure that it's, it's God and it's not me. Well, that's a very clear distinction. Come on. The more you spend time with God, the more that you will know his voice. 
is always thinking your spouse is always thinking your spouse is gonna cheat on you and dream about it a stronghold uh, absolutely it could be a stronghold if you're always thinking a stronghold is a mindset it is a, a structure that has been set up in your mind that keeps you bound up it's a fortified place it's a tough nut to crack kind of um, for lack of a better word it's a it's a tough place and so when you have that in your mind that's a belief system that you believe about your husband now the root of that very thing could be rejection it could be um, spirit of rejection and it could be just rejection that you feel and so what's happening is it's manifesting in your your dream realm and so absolutely you are called to pull those things down okay pull it down and and then the other <laughs> the other thing is Ask the Lord to give you, say, Lord, I'm praying right now for an increase of the gift of discerning of spirits. You know, it's not the gift of discernment. People mistake that. It, the, there is no gift of discernment. It's the gift of discerning of spirits, meaning you're not discerning what Sally did last Saturday and you're on the pew. God, I feel like I just discern Sally's over there doing it. No, you are to discern. That gift is to discern the spirit behind a thing. And so when that begins to happen, you say, Lord, give me the discerning of spirit so that I can know what spirit is behind the thing. That when that thing comes to you, you go, I'm discerning that this is coming to me to bring confusion. Or when something's brought to you, you say, I'm discerning that the Lord is bringing this to me as a warning. And this is actually from the Lord. So it's very important that we pray for that. And if you do constantly have that like suspicion, a suspicious thing, I used to go through that all the time. It really stemmed from a place of rejection in my own life and you can be free from that. I did a video on breaking rejection. And so if that's something you feel like it could be connected to, I encourage you to go watch that. Somebody else asked a question. Guys, join my core group. I put the link in the video. I would love for you to be a part of my mentorship. How do you deal with living in a household that is toxic? I've never been in a prophetic atmosphere before. Oh my goodness, that's so wild because you are prophetic and I've never even met you and I just know that about you. You're prophetic. You're called um, into the area of prophecy where you can hear from the Lord and you can accurately speak what the Lord is saying in the right timing of the Holy Ghost. And so what do you do if you're in a toxic environment? Well, number one, it would depend on, like you said, you're living in a toxic environment. If I was living in a house and four of the people living in the house were all witches and warlocks, I'm going to go ahead and take myself out of the house. I'm not saying that you are, okay? I'm giving examples. I'm going to remove myself from that house. I'm not going to sit there and deal with that kind of warfare. If I'm living in a home and I'm living maybe with a family member, and the family member just got some stuff going on, you know? They're like, we love each other, we're all family, but they just got some stuff going on. They're kind of like real toxic. They just got confusion, they got fear, they just, you know, they just got some stuff. Then, do I necessarily have to remove myself, continuously moving, 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 moving? No, what I can do is I can continuously press into the presence of God in such a strong way that the atmosphere around me begins to shift and to change. And the glory of God is covered the place, covered my room, covered my prayer closet, covered your prayer closet. And then I'm going to actively intercede for this person. I'm going to, to pray for them like it was my very own life. Like it was my struggle and issue. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to stand in the gap for that person. I'm going to pray. In the name of Jesus, I come against every uh, bit of strife and discord and confusion. I come against bitter roots. God, if there be any bitter roots towards that person in me, I repent of it right now. God, I thank you that the spirit of unforgiveness will not dwell here. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are going to bring the turnaround even as the midnight. And you just begin to pray and pray and pray and pray and then pray in your heavenly language if you have your heavenly language. And you are going to expect to see a turnaround. If Time goes on, you're just like, you know what? It's better for me to go and the Lord leads you in that area, then obey the Lord. So that's what I would say. If you're not around prophetic people, it's always good to join maybe online prophetic communities. Um, I know that I'm a part of tribe where my spiritual father is Apostle Ryan Lestrange. And I actually am able to be in a prophetic community 
And in my city, in my town, there isn't one. But through online ministries, I've been able to connect that way. And it's been so amazing for me. I can't tell you how amazing it's been for me without me crying. Because it, it, it's that special to me. So, all right. What about... Um, okay. Let me see. When I click the link, it's not going through. Stacy. Can you put the link up there that is actually clickable, please, so people can sign up for the core group? Do not put the word core group if that's what's causing the issue. Go, or Mary, do this as well. Go actually into Grace Academy and click on the menu where it says core group and then share that link. Just don't share the homepage link, share the core group link. And guys, of course, you can always go to JennyWeaverWorships.com. And I would love to see you in my class. What other questions do you have? Thank you for sewing. Who was that? Let me go see. Oh, I can't pull it down. Thank you, woman of God. I saw your seed come through on my cash app. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I know some other people did, but I couldn't get the notification because I was reading. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you for sewing. If this blessed you, if this time that we spent together blessed you, then feel free to sew. Sew into good ground. It's always good to sew where you're fed, sew where you're led. Okay, let me try this one. You guys, I'm going to pin this link, so see if this one works. There we go. What do you do when you're around people who don't think that watching certain shows will affect their children? Is that what the, the whole question was? Let me make sure I read that correctly. Oh, so they continue. What do you do if you're around people and you said, hey, you need to turn that off. That, that, that's not good. And they're like, oh, I don't believe that. And they continue to let their children watch that. Well, that's their children and that's them. So, I mean, there's nothing that you can really do about that other than take it to the courts of heaven and begin to intercede and pray. For one, God to reveal that revelation to them, to the Holy Ghost to convict them, and three, to cover the minds of the child as well as their future in God. And then you're gonna break every demonic power and you do what you can. And you put it in the Lord's hands. If I could go up to everybody and literally just turn off the TVs and turn the shows off and unsubscribe them from all the craziness they're subscribed to, I would. That would be my life's mission. But I can't do that. Each one is to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. And so we have to leave it in the Lord's hands. That's why when you live with people, sometimes it could be difficult if you're saved and they're Satanist. That's oil and water. That don't go together at all. So it can be very difficult for you. You sense things. You discern things. You're like, oh my gosh. You walk in the house. You just feel demons. And you're just like, Ugh, come on. This is not okay. But again, sometimes you can just clean out your place. Repent. Anoint what you can anoint. Do what you got to do. And then continue to intercede and command demons to go. Maybe the one day they'll say, you know what? I just don't feel like I can live here anymore. I got to go. Or better yet, they're going to say, tell me about Jesus because I need to get saved. And can you also cast the devil out of me? And at that point, you need to know what to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sewing. I appreciate that as well. Thank you. All right, guys. It's almost 11 o'clock. We've gone for two hours. I love you so much. You are amazing. If you sent stars, thank you. It says 2,034 stars. I appreciate that. You didn't have to do that, but you did. And God may, may God bless you for every seed that's sown, for every person that connects to the core group, for every person that is connected even to my shop and have sowed that way. God, I pray that you would bless them. Bless them for blessing me, Father. I thank you for their sacrifice. I thank you for their love, their support. I thank you for their encouragement and their faithfulness, God. I bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I thank you, God, that no devil will steal this seed that was gone, that has gone into the ground today. The devil cannot steal the word. The devil cannot steal the revelation. 
and the devil cannot steal the victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, and I decree and declare it in Jesus' mighty name. I love you guys so much, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.